Have you ever noticed how distant objects in video games sometimes pop into high detail as you get closer? That's a classic sign of level of detail, or LOD, at work. If you've ever been a 3D artist long enough, I'm sure you have heard about this term before. Let me tell you. This is really important, especially in game development. In fact, it is so vital that game developers will be very limited without it. But it can also be used in VFX projects, animation, and so on. So what is it really? And why you should care? So where do we start? Level of detail refers to the complexity of a 3D model or scene, basically how detailed an object is. In practice, LOD involves creating multiple versions of a 3D asset at different levels of complexity, for example high, medium, low, etc., and using an appropriate version depending on the situation. Usually, the closer or the more prominent an object is to the camera, the more detailed version you will need. For far away or smaller objects, a simpler version is sufficient. You see, the goal is to reduce the amount of geometry and texture detail rendered for things that aren't contributing much to the final image, thereby saving computing resources. And here is the thing though. This reduction should not noticeably impact what the viewer sees. Ideally, you don't even realize the object detail was lowered, because it still looks fine from that distance. And here is an example of level of detail in action. This character is shown in four versions, LOD0 through LOD3. The leftmost model, which is LOD0, is the high detail mesh with the most polygons. As the LOD number increases, moving to the right, the model's poly count is progressively reduced, simplifying its geometry. In a game scene or a 3D scene, LOD0 model would be used when the character is up close to the camera, while a low detailed LOD3 version might be used when the character is far away. So by swapping these simpler models for distant instances, the render engine saves work while the difference in appearance is kind of minimal at a distance. LOD systems can automatically choose which version of an asset to display based on factors like an object's distance from the camera or its size on screen. For example, imagine a lush tree right in front of the camera. You would want a model with every branch and leaf modeled in detail, but for another tree far off in the horizon, the engine might use a much simpler shape or even a flat textured billboard because at that distance you wouldn't see the individual leaves away. As the camera moves and that far tree comes closer, the engine can swap in progressively to add more detailed versions so that it always looks good from the player's or the viewer's perspective. The concept isn't limited to geometry. Texture LODs work in a similar fashion. High resolution textures are used when you are close to the surface and lower res or mid-map textures are used when the surface is far away, saving memory and avoiding aliasing. The same idea extends to other details too. Shaders or lighting complexity might be simplified for distant objects. In essence, LOD is about not overdoing detail or it won't be noticeable. And this is where it all started. Game developers began heavily using LODs as 3D console and PC games became more popular and more complex in the 1990s, which is kind of surprising to know how far it goes back. Titles on limited hardware, especially on the early PlayStation or Nintendo 64 games. For example, substituting far off characters with simple sprites or cutting the polygon count of distant buildings. By the 2000s, Virtually all major game engines had built-in support for LOD. And here's the interesting thing. It stopped being an optional trick and became a standard practice. The same happened in film and VFX industry. As VFX-heavy movies like Jurassic Park and The Lord of the Rings pushed for more and more on-screen complexity. As this happened, techniques to manage level of detail were crucial to get those shots rendered. Whether it was swapping highly detailed creature models for lightweight stand-ins when they only occupy a tiny part of the frame, or using matte paintings and 2D imposters in place instead of 3D geometry for distant scenery. So the core idea was practically the same. Today, LOD is everywhere, from the biggest budget games and films to VR applications and even architectural visualization.
So how exactly does one implement LOD in games or in 3D software in general? The workflow is actually not that complicated. You can, as a 3D artist, use automated tools to create several versions of a 3D model. Like I said, LOD0 for the highest detail, LOD1 for medium detail, LOD2 for low detail, etc. These can be made manually by simplifying the model or generated with your 3D software that disseminates polygons. And the same goes for textures, creating lower res variants. Then the render engine decides which LOD to use for a given object based on criteria like distance from the camera or how large the object appears on screen. For instance, the engine might be set to LOD1 once an object is, say, 20 meters away, and LOD2 at 50 meters away, or when the object covers only, say, 5% of the screen. These thresholds can be tweaked for balanced performance and quality. As you move around the scene, the engine swaps models in and out. Ideally, this swap is done when the change in detail won't be noticeable. For example, if a detail tree model is only a few pixels on your screen, you wouldn't notice if it is actually a much simpler tree model. When the trees get closer and these extra details would be noticeable, the engine swaps back to the high detail version. One challenge with LOD systems is handling the transaction between levels. If an object suddenly changes shape or detail level in a very obvious way, you get what is called popping. The object appears to jump or pop to a different look. And to be honest, this can break immersion as players can literally see the detail switching. You see, early LOD implementations in games sometimes had bad popping issues. You would see a distant character suddenly gain a bunch of polygons, or blurry texture snap into sharp focus as you approach. But modern techniques aim to minimize that. But how can they do this? Approaches like LOD bending or geomorphing can smoothly interpolate between LODs so that the change isn't gonna be abrupt. For example, one trick is to focus on the higher detail model while fading out the lower detail over a short distance or time, so you don't notice the swap as a single jump. Another method is to move the geometry gradually, so that the shape slowly gains detail instead of instantly, though these come with extra processing cost. Game engines today often provide built-in solutions to reduce popping, but tuning LOD transitions is still something developers pay attention to especially for polished visual results. As you can see, an LOD system is constantly doing a little juggling act, deciding which version of each object to draw each time. But without LODs, modern open-world games or high-end 3D scenes would either grind to a halt or be forced to severely limit their detail to run it in the first place. So by cleverly scaling detail, LODs lets developers create expansive worlds and complex scenes that still run efficiently, which is the point in the first place. And also, I would say, it is a key reason that we have games with vast road distances and allows us to do more things with less processing and more efficiency. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.